Hey, what's up, folks? Happy 2023. We're going to look at proto maps and PM tiles and all of that cool stuff. Now, you can think of PM tiles as kind of like a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. Cloud optimized GeoTIFF is a TIFF arranged in a way that it can use HTTP range requests to just get the portion you need rather than the whole file. Makes for efficient cloud storage and retrieval. PM tiles is kind of like that for vectors, or kind of like that for tiled sources. It can actually be raster tiled sources. But instead of a, say, SQLite database, an MB tiles format with your tiles, you have one file that's just a PM tiles format that has all of the tiles in it. And using HTTP, HTTP range requests, you can just get the tiles you need. So you don't need that tile server middleware. Neat stuff. So let's take a look. Right, you can download uh, a PM tile formatted OpenStreetMap data from ProtoMaps. They don't use the OpenMap tiles database schema. So be aware that if that's the schema your, say, GL style files are in, that's not going to draw anything for you. So bear that in mind. But you can convert existing MB tiles vector tile files to a PM tiles file and it will have all the format that it originally did. And that's what we're going to do. So there's this go PM tiles. Uh, essentially it's written in go. It's PM tiles binary that will both convert an MB tiles file to a PM tiles file and it will serve up PM tiles. And you don't need a server for that, but we'll explain all that in a moment. So let's see. Uh, I have my regular MB tiles tiles file. This is for an area around Mecklenburg County in North and South Carolina. That's all the stuff I need to see when I'm looking at a map. So let's convert that to PM tiles. And I've already downloaded this binary for Linux. We go PM tiles convert tiles.mb tiles and we're going to make tiles.pm uh, tiles. As you can see, you don't have to wait longer than that to happen. It's incredibly fast. Uh, and it makes the file a little bit smaller. See, our MB tiles files was 222 megabytes. Our PM tiles file is 196 megabytes. So you get a little bit of size reduction there. That's probably just related to SQLite table storage overhead stuff, I'm guessing. Now we have a single file and let's try serving that. Well, first let's make a project so we can actually see what's going on there. So let's go and just scaffold up a new V project. We'll go and be create V at latest and we'll just call it proto maps, proto maps and vanilla JavaScript and we'll go into there and npm install and we're going to need a library to view it. You can use PM tiles with leaflet and map libre. We're just going to use map libre. So we'll go npm install save map libre gl and PM tiles client side library. And there we go. Let's open up code here and just move that over there. Cool. We will also need to grab a, a style file for our stuff. Let's go. I'll just get my usual one. Uh, public GL. Let's copy that there. Good. We'll go npm run dev. Get a dev server running. And click on that. We see our hello world Byte project with a counter because you always need one of those. Okay, so let's start serving up some tiles. Well, yeah, well, let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll start that server. We'll go and use PM tiles, serve from here, and we need to give it a cores so we don't get any cores errors. That's our star. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Let me go back to where I put that thing. All right, now it's serving up some tiles on port 8080. Good. 
Now, PM Tiles takes HTTP range requests, and uh, Map Libre and Leaflet want to send a ZXY request to a piece of middleware. So, what PM Tiles on the server is doing here is acting as that middleware. It's going to take ZXY requests and translate in that into an HTTP range request and then send it back. So let's take a look at that. First, we need to get a map up and running. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to our index and uh, let's just, yeah, let's just do that. We'll change this div to map instead of app, which may, means nothing will work there. We'll get rid of everything except for the style import. And let's, I have this GL default snippet that imports map Libre GL and sets some stuff up. We don't want a blank map style here. Let's just import uh, style from, we'll let, give it that style file and change this to style. Now we've got a map that has no size. We need to fix that. Let's just, I could erase all this other stuff, but it's not gonna hurt anything. We'll go map. Let's give it a width of 100, 100 view width and a height, 100 view height. That is not the size I wanted. Let's, yeah, there we go. So this is drawing my tiles and everything from my regular style file. So it's hitting my, my tile server. So we've got a tile server now running for this PM tiles file. The tile server it's hitting now is my node, my little node project that just, basically it's just a, makes a SQL call to an MB tiles file is all it does. So let's change this to HTTP. We want localhost 8080. We want to give it the tiles file. You don't give it an extension when you're using the PM tiles server because it knows what that is. And I believe we have to change these to MVT at the end. Otherwise, it'll throw an error. So now it is drawing these tiles. You can see it's showing us what tiles it's shelling out straight from that one PM tiles file with no real piece of middleware there. It's, these things aren't tiled out. It's just this, this one file. So it's making HTTP, it's translating the ZXY request from Map Libre to HTTP range requests and then shelling those back out. It does that very quickly. So we can see we can't really outrun it, which is awesome. So this is serving it using this PM Tiles Go project. I don't know that they really want you to do that in production. Um, I mean, maybe it's fine, but generally things like this are, are made for cloud storage or your own storage. With, so anyway, it works fine. So we have tiles served from this one PM tile file, no middle piece of node, anything running. And all this PM tiles server is doing is running a little server that's translating our stuff. Now suppose we don't want to run this PM tiles thing. Suppose we want to run our own HTTP server that does range requests. Well, you can do that, but that PM tiles file isn't what, going to know what to do with a ZXY. It needs that HTTP range request. And we're going to use a PM tiles local JavaScript library to accomplish that. So first let's set up a server. We'll just go npx HTTP server. That node HTTP server sports range requests. And we'll start it here and we'll give it a cores of that same backslash star. So now we've cranked up server with core set. That looks good. So let's go back to our, our JavaScript or main.js. We're gonna need to import Port star from star as PM tiles from PM tiles. There's a little bit of documentation on this. Uh, we're just gonna copy this here. And what we're doing is we're making a new 
protocol. So when MapLibre sees as a URL source this PM tiles, it's going to send it to these this PM tiles function, and that's going to translate the ZXY requests from MapLibre to range requests that will go to the backend server. Hopefully that made sense. So we'll save that. It's not going to really do anything yet because we haven't changed our style file. And we're going to change this from tiles to URL. You can actually use it with tiles and give it some ZXY stuff, but it's uh, less cool. <laughs> I guess is how I describe that. Let's go localhost 8080 the server. It doesn't, it's not going to put that extension in there for us. And I believe that's all we need. So now we go back to our app. Oh, did I break something? Oh, map, oh, I copied and pasted it. And everybody in the world but me just calls it map Libre JL, and I don't. Let's see. PM tiles is not valid. Jason, let's see what we screwed up there. See, localhost 8080tiles.pmtiles. Hmm. Oh, we have to give it, it has to know what to do with it. We have to go PM tiles colon slash slash. There we go. Yeah, watch. This is how I, I, this is, this is my life. This is how I code. Uh, welcome to my nightmare. Now this is serving up the tiles from this HTTP server with no real middleware. It's just an HTTP server that supports range requests. And the PM tiles client side library is doing that translating for us. And as you can see, zippity doo dah, off it goes. Cool. Hey, there's our orifice. Uh, we don't we don't have any cool mountains we got a hole or two though neat so this is just serving from this file no middle piece of middleware server as a tile server it's just this one file isn't that cool now let's do the coolest thing uh, you can store this file in a cloud storage that supports http range requests like amazon's s3 or cloudflare's r2 they recommend Cloudflare R2 because it, it supports HTTP2, so you get more simultaneous uh, requests. And it's, it, there's no egress fees, which uh, cloud billing is always kind of uh, opaque. But I think that means when you just do get requests to get your tiles, you don't have to worry about uh, billing for that. But I don't know. So I set up an R2 bucket on Cloudflare, which is S3 protocol compatible, and put the file there. There is a little bit of uh, hand wavy stuff. You have to set it as basically public, and then you can have to run a little bit of, uh, a little bit of AWS command line stuff to uh, eventually set a cores on there so it will actually work. Uh, notice that the, you know what AWS command they give, you need an extra dash on this endpoint URL there. But that's it, once you do that little bit of hand wave stuff, it's in uh, the cloud uh, waiting to be the served. So, we're going to take the public URL for that, which we can get to under settings. That's public access. Here's our public URL. And we're going to put that where this local host is. And I believe that's it. Aha. Uh -huh. And note, I have my network caching turned off. This is all coming from, uh, from, uh, Cloudflare. So these tiles are being drawn on the fly from this one file from MapLibre, from, from Cloudflare. So MapLibre 
has this new protocol. So it sends a ZXRI request to this little protocol library on the client that translates it, the XY, ZXY to range requests that gets it from Cloudflare storage and then brings it back to MapLibre. And as you can see, you'll have a hard time outrunning it. How cool is that? We just You just upload your PM tiles file to whatever storage you have set up. Bob's your uncle. You no longer have a piece of tile serving middleware between your client and your tiles. Isn't that cool? So that's really neat. Um, I'm going to probably set one of my more popular map things at work to get the base tiles from here and just see how that works vis-a-vis -vis, uh, is this going to cost me anything or not now, the cloud storage on cloudflare is like first 10 gigabytes is free and our files like 200 megabytes egress is free i'm not sure exactly what that means and you get like 10 million of these other different kinds of requests all for free so it might be I could use this and never pay anything. You do have to bear in mind when you're using a cloud service that they can change the costs and terms and usage and everything, uh, you know, whatever they want to. So bear that in mind. I'm looking at you, Mapbox. Bear that in mind when you use a cloud service for anything. But uh, right now it looks really cool. So, so that's about it. You can download... Uh, data in a PM tiles format. Uh, they have different options where you can download from ProtoMaps. Uh, just bear in mind that is not the open map tile schema. They document the schema uh, somewhere. PM tiles. Yeah, it's, uh, I remember seeing it. Vector base layers. Yeah. Here, it'll go where all your base map layers are and so forth. But it's not the open map tile schema. So if you have style files set for that, this is a, you might want to convert your MB tiles file product you eventually make into the PM tiles, which is very fast. Hope you found that interesting. I, one of, one of my new year's resolutions is going to be to uh, post more videos I probably won't be every week because I'm not that interesting, but hopefully maybe twice a month. And uh, some of them might be shorter just because I saw a neat thing and I want to share it. I hope you guys are having a great start to the new year and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.